Good morning, everybody. Um, you're really welcome to another Sunday School Online this morning. Um, it's really good to be with you this morning and to be able to share again from God's Word in our theme that we've been following so far this year, the parables of Jesus. Now, before we think about today's parable, um, I want you to do something for me. I wonder how your week has been. Uh, maybe it's been good and you've had a good week or maybe you've had some tough moments and it hasn't been the best week. So let me know if you've had a good week. I want you to stand up and stretch up as high as you can. If you haven't had the best week, well, then you can stay in your seat. Uh, let me know how your week has been so you can move in three, two, one, go. OK, let me have a look and see what everyone's doing. OK, some people have had an OK week. Some people have had a good one. Some people, well, they've had a bit of a tough week. And, you know, as we come together this morning to learn more from God's word, the amazing thing is that God is with us and that when we open up his word, well, he speaks to us. And so if we've had a good week, well, God is there and we can give thanks to him and he celebrates with us. But if we've had a not so good week, maybe things have been tough. Maybe we're feeling a little bit sad or discouraged. Well, the good news for us in those moments is that God cares about us. God loves us and he is there. Um, he wants to hear from us and he wants to help us. So let's come to him in prayer now. Let's tell him um, how we're feeling and let's ask for his help to see more of who he is in his word today. So let's pray. So stretch your arms out wide as they come together above your head. Uh, put your hands together as they come past your eyes. Close your eyes, past your lips, close your lips and let's talk to God. Father God, we thank you that you're always with us. Thank you that you are a God who always hears us whenever we pray. In fact, thank you, God, that we can come to you anytime, anywhere. And when we speak, God, we know that you are listening. But not only do you listen, Father, uh, but you act. When we pray to you, God, you come and you give us the help that we need. So, God, for those of us who've had a good week, we thank you because we know that every good thing comes from you. But for those of us, God, who have had a difficult week, who are finding things tough, well, we thank you for your love. Thank you that you care about us. Thank you that you want to help us through the difficult times. So be with us this morning as we open up your word, as we think about another parable. Would you teach us? Would you place the truth of your word on our hearts for the week ahead? And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week, Katie shared with us about the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, and this week, well, we're in the book of Matthew in chapter 13. And we're looking at a parable called the parable of the sower. This is a story which is all about seeds and all about soil. But before we come to today's passage, let me show you a plant that sits in our kitchen. I've got it with me here. Um, have a good look at it. Hopefully, as you look at the plant that sits in our kitchen, you're thinking to yourself, hey, it looks like a pretty good and healthy plant. It's quite tall. It's got nice green bits, new bits are growing. And hopefully, it looks like it's in good condition. But I need to be honest with you all this morning. It wasn't always the case. This plant didn't always look this good. Let me tell you why. This plant, well, it was actually a gift to us from our friends and we got it maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, and when we got it, well, we put it in our office in here at home. But the thing is, we kind of forgot about it a little bit. Um, it was there and we could see it, but we never really paid that much attention to it. And often we would actually forget to water it. Not just that, but we'd also put it somewhere where it wasn't close enough to the window. And so it wasn't getting enough natural light. The result of all of that together meant that the plant, well, it didn't really grow. In fact, it actually started to turn brown and it was beginning to die. So what changed? Why does it look so good now? Well, I changed the conditions that the plant was in. I moved the plant from here in our office to downstairs in our kitchen, put it on a shelf near the window. I also remember to water it every five days or so, and so it was finally getting what it needed. With more light and with being well fed, the plant began to grow and it began to spring up into life. Where it was placed was really important. 
in the right environment, the plant can flourish, but in the wrong environment, well, it just wasn't going to last. And this is the message of the parable of the sower. One day, as Jesus was speaking to a large crowd of people, he began to tell them a story about a sower who went out to sow some seed. Now, in those days, a farmer would walk up and down his field and he would scatter the seed in all directions. As he did this in the story that Jesus tells, we see that some of the seed will accidentally fell in the wrong places. We read that the seed it fell in four different places. The first place the seed landed was on the path. And when it was on the path, well, birds could come and eat it. The second place that we read about where the seed landed was on rocky ground. Uh, the seeds, when they landed on this rocky ground, well, they would spring into life. But because there wasn't enough soil, well, the sun, as it was really warm, would soon dry up the plant and it withered away. The third place the seed fell was on thorny ground. And the thorns, well, they would grow up around the seed and they would choke it so that it couldn't thrive. And finally, the fourth place the seed lands is on good soil. That's where you want the seed to go. And as it landed on the good soil, well, the seeds, they would burst into life and they would produce great crops. Immediately after Jesus told this story, well, his disciples, they came to him and they asked him a question. Here's what they asked him. They said, why do you speak to them in parables? Perhaps the disciples were confused and they didn't understand the story. Or maybe they saw that those who were listening on weren't quite sure what the story was about. So they were trying to get Jesus to explain it a little bit. We don't really know what they were thinking. But what we do know is that Jesus goes on to explain what this story, this parable is all about. Jesus explains to everybody that the seed in this story, in this parable, actually represents God's word, the Bible. And the ground where it lands, well, it's all about our hearts, because not everybody will hear God's word and respond in the same way. The message, well, it's the same for all of us. So there's no problem with what God says. The problem, well, it's actually with us and it's with our hearts because they're affected by sin. So what do these four places where the seed falls actually represent? Well, the path or the hard ground represents people who don't understand the good news about Jesus whenever they hear it, or those who hear it, but they just refuse to believe that it's true. They don't want anything to do with Jesus. The evil one is constantly at work in their hearts, making sure that they can't understand what Jesus has done for them and how they should respond. The stony or the rocky ground, well, it represents someone who likes the idea of following Jesus. They love God's word when it's convenient for them, whenever it's easy to do. But when things aren't quite going their way or when things get tough, well, then they're quick to lose faith and give up on Jesus. The thorny ground, well, it represents someone who listens to and obeys the word of God. But then they become distracted by other things in this world, things like money popularity, possessions, hobbies. They soon find that their focus on God begins to decrease and other things begin to take his place. God isn't number one for them anymore. Something else is more important to them. And so the faith that they did have, well, it withers and it begins to fade away. These people, well, they have to make a choice when it comes to what they love most. Will they choose to love God or will they choose to love something else more than him? And the sad thing is that often they refuse to give up the things that they love. And so they choose not to follow Jesus. Then finally, we have the good soil. And the good soil it represents people who hear God's word and who understand the good news about Jesus. They have a love for Jesus that is so much bigger than the love that they have for anything else in this world. They choose to follow Jesus, to put their trust in him. They choose to put Jesus first in their lives. And so because of that, well, their faith grows and God is able to use them to do great things. You know, thinking about this parable, well, it all leads me to a very important question. How much do we love God's word? How much do you love God's word? How important is it to us? 
How important is it to you? You see, the only way my plant could grow and be full of life was if it got light and if it got food. We all know how important food is for us as well. None of us forgets to eat each day because our stomachs, well, they're really good at reminding us whenever we're hungry and whenever we need food. We would never go a day without eating. And so we really shouldn't go a day without the food that we need the most, without reading God's word. Matthew 4 verse 4 says this, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Physical food, well, it's delicious and it's enjoyable, but the food that we need the most in life is found in God and in his word. So we shouldn't go a day without it. Let's pray that we would be like people in the Bible called the Berians, who we are told about in Acts 17. And here's what we're told about them. They receive the word of God with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily. These people loved God's word. They loved their Bibles and they spent time with God in his word every day. There's a man called John Piper and he says this. He says, breathe the Bible. Don't try to hold your breath from Monday to Wednesday. Breathe every day. I really like that quote because it's a reminder of how important God's word is to us. You know how hard it is to hold your breath. You can't do it for much more than maybe 10 seconds at the most. We need to constantly breathe uh, or we'll get into trouble. Yeah, and what John Piper is saying there is, look, we need God's word and we need it every day, not just every so often. It's really important that we continually spend time with God. And so let me ask you, as we finish up this morning with our parable, will you take time this week to enjoy God's word and to enjoy spending time with him in prayer? Will you choose to follow Jesus even when things get a little bit tough? Will you choose to love God more than anything else in life? Will you listen to God and will you obey him? Because when we put our trust in Jesus and when we spend time with him in God's word, the Bible tells us well, then we will know true joy and we will find life at its very best. Okay, let's take everything we've been thinking about this morning and let's try and put it into our minds and put it into our hearts. Um, so let's have a bit of a quiz and see how much of this we can remember. Let's go. Okay, great job everybody. Thanks for joining in with our quiz. Um, and the last thing that we have to do this morning is to learn another memory verse. Now, I was trying to think how we could do this and have a little bit of fun this morning, because I don't know about you, but in this lockdown, I get a little bit bored at home. So here's what I thought I would do this week. I thought I would turn our memory verse into a song and I'd teach you the song with some actions. So I'm gonna grab my guitar magically uh, I'm, I'm going to let you hear the song uh, that I made up to help us learn today's memory verse. Okay, I've had to move to a different camera, but uh, I'm going to let you hear the song that I've written to teach us this week's memory verse. Then once you've heard it, 
I'll get you to sing along with me and then once you've got the hang of it, I'll throw in some actions and see if you can play those as well. So here's our memory verse this week. Hopefully that's easy enough to, to sing along to. Uh, so let me do it again. And this time I'd love you to join in. If you don't want to sing, well, you can just say the words along with me because they're coming up on the screen. Let's go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. job right I think it's about time we learn some actions so I'll put my guitar down and let me show the actions very quickly so for love we're gonna go with our hands on our hearts love the Lord and when we call God Lord we're saying that he's king over our lives so for Lord we're gonna pretend to put a crown on our heads so love the Lord your God will point up towards heaven with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And I want to see your muscles. So let's go over those one more time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Okay, so those are the actions. Do you think we can sing and do the actions at the same time? We're definitely going to give it a go. So let me grab my guitar. Okay, so if you follow the screen up in the top corner, you'll be able to see the actions as well. But let's sing this one more time as we learn our memory verse for this week. Let's go. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and Maybe you can share that verse with everybody in your house at lunch today as well. But thank you for joining in. Okay, boys and girls, that is us done for another week. But already we're excited to meet with you again next Sunday morning for another parable, another story that Jesus told. So have a really good week and we will see you next week.